Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We are back again. Our hearts have been in a time of worship. And I just want to greet you all again in the mighty and matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Isn't he just an awesome God? Isn't he just a powerful God? Let's get straight into our scripture reading this morning. Thank you so much for joining us. I want to encourage you all again to please like and share and pray with us uh, during the uh, period of this broadcast. God bless you as we turn to the book of 1 Corinthians, reading from verse 1 to 4. 1 Corinthians, reading from verse 1 to 4. I want to encourage you also to please get your Bibles as we usually go through many scriptures and show you what we are saying through the word so that you can understand and also you will be able to defend what you have learned in our broadcast. 1 Corinthians, hallelujah, 1, 1 Corinthians 4 from 1, let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. But with me it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you or of man's judgment. Yea, I judge not mine own self, for I know nothing by myself. Yet am I not hereby justified, but he that judgeth me is the Lord. Therefore, judge nothing before the time until the Lord come who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the hearts, and then shall every man have praise of God. And these things, brethren, I have in a figure transferred to myself and to Apollos for your sakes, that he might learn in us not to think of men above that which is written, that no one of you be puffed up for one against another. For who maketh thee to differ from another? And what hast thou that thou didst not receive? Now if thou didst, didst receive it, why dost thou glory as if thou hast not received it? Now ye are full, now ye are rich. He have reigned as kings without us, and I would do God and I would to God he did reign, that we also might reign with you. For I think that God had set forth us the apostles last, as it were appointed to death. For we are made a spectacle unto the world, and to angels, and to men. We are fools for Christ, but ye are wise in Christ. We are weak, but ye are strong. Ye are honorable, but we are despised here ends the reading glory be to the name of the lord and let us pray this morning father we thank you we give you all the praise and the glory and the honor to you be all splendor to you be all majesty for you are awesome you are great in all the world we thank you lord that you sit up high and you look down low hallelujah this morning lord god we thank you, Lord God, that the feet of those who bring good news this morning are beautiful, Father. We thank you, Lord God, that those who proclaim peace, that those who bring good tidings, Lord God, that those who proclaim salvation and that God reigns their feet are beautiful this morning in your sight. We thank you, Lord God, for your kingdom. We thank you for your power and we thank you for your glory this morning, Lord God. Father, I declare that your kingdom come, Lord God, in my life. I declare that your kingdom come in the lives of my family. I declare that your kingdom come in the life of my neighborhood, my community, my country, Lord God. Let your kingdom come in every corner and every crevice of this earth, Father. Let nothing hide, oh God, from your kingdom and your kingdom being established, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, I come against everyone that stand in the way of those entering the kingdom this morning, Lord God. For those who will not inherit or enter the kingdom, Father, I pray that they be removed, Lord God, 
hallelujah, from the midst of your people, Lord. I pray that there are your people who are seeking you and who are seeking truth, Lord God, that their eyes be opened this morning, Father, by your spirit of truth, and they, they be led, Father, into your kingdom, not as children, Lord God, having milk, Father, but children who are ready to eat meat, Father, who are, that are children who are ready, Lord God, to possess your kingdom, to occupy, Father, your kingdom in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I pray, hallelujah, that those who stand in the way of sinners, Father, that they be removed from the midst of them this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Father, I pray that your kingdom Oh God, be revealed in the heart of man this morning, Lord God. In the heart of the slanderous, Lord God. In the heart of the sexual immoral, sexually immoral this morning, Lord God. In the heart of idolaters, Lord God. In the heart of thieves, Lord God. In the heart of those who are greedy this morning, Lord God. In the heart of the drunken, Lord God. In the heart of the slanderers, those who swindle. Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus, may they be washed this morning, Father, as you wish that no man perish, Lord God, and inherit your kingdom, Father. I pray, Lord God, that your glory, your majesty, hallelujah, be revealed unto your children, hallelujah, this morning, Lord God. I declare that children, Lord God, of whatever tender age that they see and come to your kingdom and be allowed and introduced to your kingdom, hallelujah, this morning, in Jesus' name. Father, I pray, Lord God, that those in the world who you have already predestined, Lord God, to be a part of your kingdom. I pray this morning that they repent, Lord God, for the kingdom of God is at hand in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, those who are already a part of your kingdom and recognize and know who are walking uprightly, Lord God, in righteousness, Lord God, and in holiness, Father, I pray that they demonstrate your kingdom I pray, Lord God, that there be a prophetic wave, Lord God, a prophetic wind, a prophetic, uh, oh God, activation in the mighty name of Jesus, that demons will be cast out, Father. Glory be to the name of the Lord, that this, this, those who are sick will be healed, Father, for your kingdom. Oh God, to be demonstrated for you said, Lord God, wherever demons are cast out, Lord God, hallelujah, then the kingdom of God is established. Oh Father, I pray that your people come to the realization, Lord God, that the kingdom of God is within them this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I declare... Oh God, that your people seek your glory, Lord God, that they seek your presence, glory be to the name of the Lord, that they seek, Father, to worship you in spirit and in truth, that they, oh God, seek, oh God, to honor you, to revere you, even as it is in heaven, Lord God, where you are being worshiped and hailed in all your glorious splendor, let it come into the hearts of man this morning, Lord God. Let your power, oh God, be revealed through those who you have called, Lord Jesus, for such a time. Hallelujah, as this. Father, because we know that your kingdom goes with power, Lord God. Give, Father, your, your people who you have set in place. In this hour, Lord God, whatever rank, whatever creed, whatever race, Lord God, give them of your power that they may declare your word, Father, with power that transform, Lord God, that minds will be delivered and will be healed this morning, that minds will be changed. Oh God, that man will repent this morning in Jesus' mighty name. Let your fire, oh God, rest upon your people, that even as they declare your word, Lord God, that they will get so excited, Father, oh God, that they will rise and they will declare your word, Father, from to the ends of the world, Lord God, beginning in their homes, 
in the mighty and powerful name of Jesus. Let them that are true be revealed, Lord God. Let them with true hearts be revealed this morning, Lord God, by your mighty power. And we thank you, Lord God, for what you're about to do in this session. Father, we lift up the name, hallelujah, of Jesus this morning. And we join forces with every ministry that is lifting up the name of Jesus, Lord God. That there be no, no hindrances, Lord God, to their word. We bind every attack, Lord God. Every backlash and every retaliation from your word going forward in the mighty name of Jesus. We say, Lord God, hallelujah, that the name of Jesus, hallelujah, is established. And demons shall tremble and flee from the presence of our mighty God and save it this morning, Father. And we thank you for your love. We thank you for your Holy Spirit, Lord God, who will continue to reveal unto us all, Lord God, that you have taught, all that you have said. And now, Father, we just declare that your kingdom, your power, and your glory continue to be revealed over all the earth. We pray, Lord God, for this man of God this morning. Father, as he is about to declare your word, we thank you, Lord God, for your Holy Spirit resting upon him, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for the power and the anointing that will break and destroy every yoke in the mighty name of Jesus. We come against, Lord God, every attack, Lord God, every lie, oh God, every dismantling spirit, oh God, in the kingdom of darkness, in Jesus' name. And we release, hallelujah, the kingdom of God to be in our midst, hallelujah, the glory of God where no darkness shall dwell in Jesus' mighty name. And Father, finally, I plead your blood, oh God, over this household and over the household of everyone who is watching this morning in the mighty and powerful name of Jesus. Father, I declare, even as your people are still seeking and know you as a healer that you are, Father, I declare this morning, Father, that every uh, feminine issue, Lord God, be dried up this morning. And the, your saint, Lord God, who is worshiping you and believing you for healing this morning in Jesus' name. I command the cess, hallelujah, glory be to the name of the Lord, to be demolished right now in Jesus' name. I command fibroids to disappear in the name of Jesus. I call on the Holy Spirit, the spirit of creation, hallelujah, to recreate, hallelujah, that uh, female reproductive organ right now in Jesus' name, that healing take place in your body in Jesus' name. Every cyst operating, hallelujah, in the breast, hallelujah, I command it to dry up in the mighty name of Jesus. That spirit of pain associated, hallelujah, with those cysts and fibroids, I command your power to be broken right now by the mighty and powerful name of Jesus. Every spirit of sickness, disease, and infirmity that is attacking the body, oh God of your believers, I command that it be broken, that the power be broken this morning. I command it to seize and to die. Hallelujah, by your mighty power, Lord God. For you declare that healing is the children's bread, Father. And we take up your take on your word this morning that says that the curse causeless cannot come, Father. By whatever ever means, Lord God, that sickness, disease, and infirmity, Lord God, came upon your, your servant, Lord God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we break that curse, Lord God, as we take on the Lord Jesus Christ this morning. For we know, hallelujah, that cursed is he who hang upon the tree, Lord God. You hang upon the tree to take every curse, to take every amen, to take every sickness, Lord God. To take every burden, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, that we may not bear it, Father, because you have already done it. Hallelujah for us to your son this morning. And so I declare healing in the midst of the people of God. I declare healing in the midst of those who are watching this morning in Jesus' name. Healing in your mind. 
healing in your body. I break the power of unforgiveness, hallelujah, this morning that causes, hallelujah, our righteous and those other issues associated with it this morning in Jesus' name. I speak, Lord God, that your child, the one who is watching, has the power now to overcome that unforgiveness in Jesus' name, that they have the power to rise up Lord God, in Jesus' name, that they have the power to rise up and repent, Lord God, from every sin, from every evil thing. In the mighty name of Jesus and your word, Lord God, be proven true, Lord God, in every home and in every heart of your people in Jesus' mighty and powerful name. And Father, for this, we won't stop to give you praise. We won't stop to give you glory and honor that you are so deserving of. And Father, we worship you now in spirit, hallelujah, and in truth. Let your kingdom come as it is in heaven. In Jesus' mighty and powerful name we pray. Amen and amen. Glory be to the name of the Lord. I want to thank you again for joining us uh, from the continent of Africa, from Asia, Southeast Pacific, from uh, the U.S., from the Caribbean, from here in the Bahamas. We want to say that we love you and we know that you are going to truly be blessed by the word of God that is about to come forth this morning. I want you to get ready now. I want you to have your Bibles ready because we are going to pray, hallelujah, for you this morning. We are going to release the prophetic word that God has given us over your life, hallelujah, this morning. And we want you to have your Bibles ready. We want you to get yourself ready, hallelujah, so that your spirit can bear witness with what the Lord is about to do. And before I go, I want to encourage you to go ahead and share this with your friend, everyone who you know who need healing and deliverance and who need a word to transform their lives. Go ahead and like and share. Hallelujah this morning. Get your Bibles ready and prepare for Apostle Corley as he come. The Lord bless him. Hallelujah. As he gives to you this morning what the Lord has placed in his heart. In Jesus' mighty and powerful name. Hallelujah. Are you ready? I'm going to give you a minute or two just to go ahead quickly, quickly, quickly share with someone who you know needs a word. Hallelujah. This morning that they can be empowered within themselves. Hallelujah. To rise and to shine because their glory has come. Go ahead. I'm giving you a minute or so. Hallelujah. To share because people of God, they need the word. They need the true word this morning and they need Hallelujah, to see where it can line up with their lives. They need to see where it can take them. Hallelujah, in this hour, so many, hallelujah, of us are going through, hallelujah, this, this, this season, amen, that can be so tumultuous in our lives. But guess what? All we need is just a light, hallelujah, to go off, the, that perfect idea that can only come hallelujah from our father that can only come through his word and through his holy spirit that will make a change in our lives how many of you are just tired of, of sitting there you need a new idea amen a new idea for a business you need a new idea for income i i tell you the truth and i prophesy that many new businesses especially online businesses are going to arise in this, in this perfect season that the Lord has set up, especially for his saints to be empowered. And people of God, the word of God says that he blessed the works of your hands. The word of God also said that your gifts shall make room for you. If you don't believe me, you can look it up in the word for yourself. And so I come in agreement with someone this morning that your gift will make room for you. Yes, you. I am talking to you this morning. No more doubting. No more saying that you cannot do this or you don't know how or when. Now is the time that the door has been opened for your gift to make room for you. Go forward in Jesus' mighty name. Do not be distracted. Do not be dismayed. Just let the Spirit of God continue, hallelujah, to lead you. And, <laughs> and I should ask you for commission. I'm just joking. Just go ahead and be blessed and bless others just as how the Lord would have blessed you in this season. God bless you as apostle 
uh, Dr. Calavo Kwali comes to give you the word of God this morning. We love you. Like, share, and pray with us. And get ready for a powerful time of the word and of prayer. In Jesus' mighty name. God bless you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, praise the Lord. To God be the glory. It's so good to see all of you. What an awesome time. Thank you, Shalewa, and all of you who are here listening and watching. What an honor it is to be back. I know, I know some of you have been asking, but to God be the glory. We are here. We took some time to pray and rest as we finished that school of ministry, and now we're back. Get ready for a powerful teaching in the Lord. We are talking about the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Well, you know, the systems of man, the systems of man have fallen and failing. I am sad to say we are living in an unprecedented time. And I'm telling you, but I've been in prayer. Shalewa and I have been in prayer and we've asked the Lord, what is it are we going to say to your wonderful people, Lord? And he has given us some powerful things to share with his people around the world, around the nations. Because why? Every day I'm watching the reports right now. Hey, all throughout the world, but in the U.S., 37 million unemployed. All throughout the Caribbean, all around the nations, industries are closing. Airline industries, hotel, tourism industries. I'm talking about stocks and markets are coming, crumbling down. I'm telling you, this is the time of greatest uncertainty. I even saw in a report this week that hospitals might close. Why? Because all around the world, because of this outbreak, hospitals and healthcare providers, uh, they make their, generate their revenue from surgical procedures and other visits, and they are in crisis, possibly about to be closed down. Nations are closing. And I want us to pray for world leaders. I want us to pray for our president. I want us to pray for our prime ministers and leaders because they need sure answers because they just don't know the impact of all of this. This is something totally new and unprecedented. And we have to pray for our leaders because, you know, there is no real one solution to how to deal with this time. But I'm telling you about a kingdom and a Lord that is unshakable, who is not surprised by what is going on now. So we thank you for this time. I want to begin with a word of prayer. And if you can, just pray with us. Join us. Share this if you would like. And get ready to be blessed in the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you. We thank you for what you have done and what you continue to do for us in our lives. Lord, we come humbly before you. We don't know what to do. We don't know where to go. We don't know what to say because this is uncharted waters. But today, I believe you have the keys and the principles that's going to bring us through this time of crisis, this time of uncertainty, this time of unemployment, this time of lock-in, this time of... Uh, uh, uncertainty of food and job and finances and what's going to happen to our families and loved ones and what's going on in the world. Only you have the answer, so we seek you together. 
Holy Spirit, we ask you to teach us your word. Give us hope in your word because the only hope is in you. Your word is never changing. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so, Lord, we call upon you. Let your word be revealed with us, giving us hope in our lives and in our minds, peace of mind. We thank you for it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's jump straight into the word this morning. We have a lot to cover, so please, I ask you to take a minute. I'm going to give you one minute because today we're going to jump into the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Keys, crisis keys for surviving this crisis and any crisis. I'm going to ask you to get your Bibles, get your notepads because we're going to be writing a lot. We're going to be studying a lot. Uh, we're not going to be shouting, but we are going to, Mel, I'm telling you, if the Lord wants to speak a word to you, he will from the beginning. But I want you to get your Bibles, get your books, get your notepads. If you want to share this, please go ahead and share this with someone. It's going to be some truth today. I'm going to give you 30 seconds to get ready to do that. And we're going to then jump straight into it. Our key scripture today, we have a few of them. Write this down. Start to write this down. Get your books, notepads, iPads, your tablets. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, Luke 4 and 43. Get it now and we'll be right with you. Good, I think you have it. All right, let's go straight to this first of all. Okay, so first of all, we're talking about the kingdom of God. Now, the kingdom of God is crisis government that has never begun, never stopped existing, and will never stop existing. What do I mean? The kingdom of Jesus Christ is eternal. Christ Jesus is eternal. Thank you all for watching us. You went with us through the school of the Holy Spirit. I want you to go back and review that, but we are talking about the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Why am I choosing this topic on this morning? You know, I, I listen to so many on social media, and I pray for all pastors and leaders all over. But I'm saying, Lord, I couldn't find a message to give the people. A message of, it's going to get better. It's going to turn around. Things are going to work out. Well, I've tried that, and I've, I've seen that people today realize the reality of what's happening. And those type of simple words, and you know, it's not going to give you, it's going to give you a temporary relief. But I'm telling you, when you get off the social media and the comedy stops and the other activities stop on social media, I'm telling you, you come right back to the reality when it's quiet. Oh my God, where are we? And if we ever trust in the Lord, we have to trust Him now. But trusting Him is just not believing Him alone. No, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. We need to get the Word of God. We need to get the scriptures concerning our issues to see the breakthrough. What am I saying? Well, if you are going through crisis, you need scriptures on how to deal with crisis. If you are sick, I was listening this morning, not that I'm sick, but we were listening to scriptures on healing. We allow, we allow the scriptures to pray, play. Why? Faith comes by hearing. I'm going to get the faith in what I hear. Praise God. If you listen to the news all day, that's what's going to build your faith. That's going to build your reality. Because why? Jesus said, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So if I listen to... Uh, you know, how the world is going to crumble all day, that's what I'm going to believe. It becomes my reality. If I listen to the Word of God all day, if I listen to what Jesus says, if I listen to what the Holy Spirit reveals, if I listen to the principles of the Word of God, then my faith is going to be built on that Word, and as a man thinks in his mind, so is he, I will have the mind of Christ concerning every single thing. That's the kingdom of God. So the kingdom of God is doing things the Lord's way. The kingdom of God is applying the word of God into every situation concerning your life. That's the faith you and I get. And once we get the word, we will be secured. Now, what are you saying, Dr. Carly? Today, I'm not saying because you hear any message from me or anyone else, things are going to magically change. 
But I believe when you get the word in your heart and your spirit, something is going to explode in your life. You will have the faith. You will have the power. You will have the confidence. I don't know. Maybe the Lord on this program is going to heal your life and heal your body. Maybe on this program, praise the Lord. The Lord is going to just build you the faith that you can endure this week until your miracle happens. Maybe the, the, this word is going to stir you up that you're going to be able to turn your heart back to Christ and depend on him and say, no matter what happens, I am going to trust in my God. I'm going to believe him though the world shakes. I will trust in the unshakable God. Praise God. I just don't know. But I know one thing. When the word is declared, the Bible said, his word will not come back to him void. But it will accomplish that which it was sent out to do. If you get this word today, I'm telling you, the Lord will transform your life. Praise God. So let's go to a few scriptures here. Let's go to our first scripture, Matthew 6 and 33. Praise God. You would have heard it before, but seek ye first the kingdom of God. Now Jesus is speaking here. And his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Where did that scripture come from? Well, Jesus was uh, approached by his disciples and, you know, his followers, just like a time of this corona. And they asked him, Master, what's going to happen? What are the signs of the time? What are the signs of your coming? What are the signs of the end of the world? Tell us exactly what's going to happen. Man, I'm telling you, I'm asking him the same thing. Lord, is this the coming of your second coming? Is this the end of the days? Is this the time? What do we believe? What do we stand on? And I'm like one of those disciples. Lord, I need answers. And so Jesus said, don't worry about what you're going to eat. Now I know it's difficult in a locking time. Many are without jobs and you're telling me I must not worry about what I'm going to eat. God bless all of you watching. Good to see you, man of God. I'm going to shout some of you out in a little bit. Stay on after you get this word. Then we're going to pray with you and for you this kingdom blessing. Jesus said, don't worry about what you're going to eat. Can you imagine in a time of famine, Ferguson, the Lord is saying, Abigail, not to worry about what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink, and what you're going to wear, but seek first the kingdom of God. I want to let you know two words of kingdom. In the Old Testament, the word mamlaka is the word kingdom. It means dominion. It means rulership. It means the authority. Of the Lord Adonai, Jehovah, ruling over the earth. He not only rules over the earth, he rules over the heavens and the earth. The Adonai. What do I mean by Adonai? When we see in the Old Testament the word God, it means Adonai. The God we serve is Adonai. He is Jehovah. He is Elohim. I wish I had time. Ah, Debbie, God bless you. Uh, and, in the, and, and so the Old Testament word for kingdom is mamlaka. In the New Testament Greek, the word uh, kingdom is basilia. It means the rulership and authority of this king over his people, over the land, over the territory, and the king's will must be accomplished. So when Jesus is saying, seek first the kingdom of God, what he's really saying is, I want you to seek out my way of ruling in your life. My way of ruling in your family. My way of ruling in your business. My way of ruling in your professional life, in your personal life, in your affairs. Jesus wants to be king and Lord of your life. Yes, we know him as healer. He is a healer. We know him as provider. Yes, as provider. Yes, we know him as a comforter. He is a comforter. Yes, we know him as even the savior of the world. Through the blood of Jesus and through the cross, the dying of Jesus on the cross and his powerful resurrection, we know him as savior. But I want to let you know he is another position. That position is he is king forever in eternity. You better get this on quickly. Tell someone come on because we're just diving into it. We have some keys here today that you don't want to miss. We're going to give you as many as we can today. So when Jesus says seek first the kingdom, that's just not a whole, you know, weird thing out of the blue. No, he's saying seek the dominion. Seek the way of the king. Who is the king? 
I'm going to tell you now, I'm happy you ask. Praise God. I'm happy you ask who is king. Hallelujah. I got it right here. You just stay with me today. First of all, who is king? Let's go to it. Who is king? All right. Praise be to the Lord. Are you ready today? Let's go to John chapter 8, verse 14. We're going to see who's the king this morning. John chapter 8. Turn your Bibles with me. I tell you we're going to be going through scripture this morning. John chapter 8, verse 14. Jesus answered and said unto them, Though I bear record of myself, yet not... Yet my record is true, for I know whence I came and whether I go, but you cannot tell whence I come and whether I go. Jesus is saying, you don't know who I am. But he's going to tell us who he is. John chapter 8, verse 18. I am one that bears witness of myself and the Father that sent me. Jesus is saying, I am the Father, I am one. I am the one that bears witness of this eternal God. Verse 28, then said Jesus unto them, when ye have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall ye know that I am he, and that I do nothing of myself, but as my Father has taught me, I speak these things. Jesus is saying, I am speaking what the Father told me, I and the Father are one. You have to get this, because if the Jehovah, the Adonai, the Elohim, is God and creator of all heaven and earth and king of the universe. Ah, uh, Sam says, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting door, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. So the psalmist, David, is talking about this king of glory, the father, the creator. And Jesus now comes in John chapter 8 and says, I and the father are one. What is he saying? I am king. I am Lord. But as my father has taught me, I speak these things. John 8 and 29. And he that sent me is with me. The father had not left me alone, for I do always those things that pleased him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I wish I had time. You read the rest of John. Uh, let's go to 54 there. John chapter 8, verse 54, Jesus answered, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my Father that honoreth me, and whom ye say that he is your God. He, Jesus said to them, You say that Jehovah Adonai Elohim is your God, and I am saying I bear witness of him. I am he in the flesh. I speak of him. I talk of him. You know, that's what God Jesus killed, because he was saying he was equal with the Father of creation. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. I'm a short time. I'm going to leave that there. Colossians. Let's go to Colossians. Colossians chapter 2. What am I doing? I'm telling you right now who the king is. Who's the king of this kingdom that we should see? You cannot follow a kingdom if you don't know the king of that kingdom. Colossians chapter 2 verse 13 to 15. Praise to the Lord. Let's go back to Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. Beware lest any man spoil you after spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. After the tradition of man and after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. I want to let you know you have to be careful in this hour because there are many voices trying to move you away from Christ Jesus being Lord and King. There are many messages. Oh, this is going to get better. Ah, uh, you know, I have so many sermons, but I'm telling you in the time of crisis, I'm so happy that the only thing the Lord taught me to seek him on is the kingdom of God. And I'm telling you, I, my life is being so blessed because I know the kingdom. So that's why I'm sharing it with the world as often as I can by the grace of God. So Jesus said in Colossians chapter 2, Beware that anyone takes you off to other topics. And this time, you need to know the king, who's Jesus. You need to know the father. 
You need to know the Son. You need to know the Holy Spirit. You need to know the kingdom of God. You need to understand the kingdom. You need to understand the laws of the kingdom and how to apply them to your lives so that you don't have to be depending on a prophet every day online. There are more prophets online than ever before. I'm telling you in this time, I don't want to hear about prosperity only because what can prosperity do in this time? Praise God. The only prosperity that can help you and I now is the prospering in Christ Jesus. The only thing that can save you and I now is faith in Christ. The only thing that can survive us to bring us through this time is holding on to Christ's unchanging hand, being filled with his word, standing in anticipation for his triumphant return, networking and fellowshipping with the saints, hallelujah, seeking the Holy Spirit, being strengthened in the inner man. This is what's going to bring us through, but I'm going to tell you the rest of that. You better stay on here. Praise God. Colossians chapter 2 Verse 9 What am I doing? I'm talking about Jesus the King first Hallelujah What does he say? For in him Colossians 2 and 9 For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily I'm telling you any Jehovah Witness Any person who are uh, any other believing system That denies Jesus is Lord and God No he's not a God He is the God He is the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit they are one in nature, but they express themselves differently in time. Now, if you don't believe that, I'm sorry. I only can show you what it says. The Father, Jesus now, the Son is in the earth. He walked the earth. And Colossians said, Paul said, in Jesus is all the fullness of the Godhead. Now, if there's a Godhead and Jesus is on the earth, that means he reflects the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Colossians 2 and 9, for him, in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead in bodily form. And ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. Jesus is the head of every principality and power. What am I saying? Jesus is the head of every nation. I know many nation leaders think they own the nations. I laugh at world leaders because they think they own the nations. Ah, your presidents, your prime ministers, your kings and queens, they feel they own the nation. But I want to remind them, the earth is the Lord, the fullness thereof, the world, and they that dwell therein. Hallelujah. They're going to be in and out. Hallelujah. But Jesus will still be Lord on his throne forever. Praise God. I'm so happy that I'm, I'm a part of a government. I'm a part of a nation. It's called the nation of Christ. It's called, the, another word, is the kingdom of Christ, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. All of them are the same thing. It's a nation. The Bible said in 2 Peter, you are a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Everyone that is in Christ Jesus, you are a nation. You have a passport. You have rights and benefits. Your government, which is the kingdom of God, through Christ Jesus, is obligated to feed you, clothe you, and take care of you. That's why Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, don't worry about what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink, what you're going to wear. Seek the kingdom of God, because every kingdom takes care of its citizens. Praise God. How do I know? Some of you are living in earthly nations, where your governments are offering stimulus packages. If I'm right, say amen. They're giving you bonuses. Some nations are giving checks to its citizens to provide food and to pay for shelter and pay for rent and give you some money. They're providing food. They're providing stimulus packages for businesses. They're bailing out businesses. Why? Because governments are obligated to protect its citizens. Governments are obligated to feed its citizens. Governments are obligated to clothe its citizens. Governments are obligated to protect its citizens and give its citizens health care and social service and equal opportunity. Well, I want to let you know, the government that I am a part of and, and you are a part of, if Jesus is your Lord, I'm telling you, is obligated to take care of you. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's why Jesus said, O ye of little faith, why are you worrying? Don't you know your father feeds the birds? Praise God. I don't see any birds falling down with depression. Praise God. I went outside this last week. I haven't seen any lizards worrying. I haven't seen any fish floating to the top of the water. Why? They are going on as normal. Praise God. In fact, in nations around the world, 
The animals are running wild in the city. Why? They're not worrying about a thing. Jesus said, don't you know your father's going to take care of you? Do you see the, I don't see the trees worrying about Corona. I don't see the coconut trees, the palm trees, the mango trees, the sugar cane trees. I don't see the fruit trees worrying about Corona. They're living life as normal. The flower trees are blossoming as normal. Hallelujah. The animals are living as normal. They're not worried about Corona. So what much more you and I who are the sons of Jesus Christ. We are the sons of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And we are a part of his kingdom. He said if your earthly fathers could take care of you much more. I will protect you. I will keep you. I will feed you. And that's it. Praise God. Jesus. I'm going ahead of myself preaching. Well, why? Because I'm telling you, if Jesus can take care of you, that's all the hope you have. Some of you want to believe a political leader's word more than Jesus. I'm sorry for you. Some trust in chariots, some in horses. I'm going to trust in the name of the Lord. I'm not going to trust myself's ability. I won't trust my skill ability. I'm not going to trust my own ability to make things happen. I'm going to trust in the word of the Lord. And if the word of God says, son, I want you to do this, then I'm going to go with confidence because I know my Lord is backing me up. But I'm not worrying about dying of starvation. I'm not worrying about faltering and failing. My God has brought me through much more than this. The same God that brought me through the last 15 years of miracles, the God that turned my life around, that saved me, that delivered me, that healed me, that blessed me, the same God that empowered me, the same Jesus Christ that I, I've seen his miraculous hand, I'm here to say to you, he's going to provide and meet your need, he's going to touch your life, he's going to bless your life, but you have to seek his kingdom, you have to go after him in all your hearts, you have to go unsparingly seeking his face that you may know him. I told you I'm going to preach. Oh, I got so much more to cover. You better stop right now. So he said, hallelujah, praise be to God. He's the head of all principality. Jesus is not concerned about Satan. And I want to let you know there's a satanic plan behind this coronavirus. I don't care what you think. Yes, it's a real virus, but I'm telling you, the forces of hell, Satan is doing his last greatest thrust. You better share this with someone. Satan is trying to distract people, but the Lord, even in the midst of corona, has allowed the world to be still so that they can hear the voice of the Lord. I'm telling you, for the last three months, some of you have never been so quiet. Amen. What I mean by quiet? Some of you have never been this rested. Some of you got time to rest and be with your family. You got time to pray. You got time to read the Bible. You got time to seek the Lord. All of the things in your life has now been restructured. I know it did for me. All of the things I thought were important, I see they're not important. Hallelujah. Right now, money can't help you. Right now, a career can't help you. Right now, a new car can't help you. Right now, a new house can't help you. All of these things that, you know, we spend our lives seeking after. But I've been seeking the kingdom of God and I've been more filled than I've ever been. I've been seeking the word of God. I've been coming back to my Jesus. I've been going before my Lord and repenting. I've been going back to the Lord and saying, Lord, how do I reacquaint my life with you? How do I restore my life with you? I've been praying, Lord, search my heart. Lord, I want to put everything, all of the plans I had. Hallelujah. Uh, as I, I, in this time of shutdown, I've just been throwing away stuff. Why? All the plans I realized, they were my own plans. Some of you had tons of plans for 2020 and 21. You had vacation plan, cruises, travel. You had all the things planned for your life, what you're going to do, what you're going to invest in. And all of a sudden it's changed. But that's all right. This is a time to refocus. Say refocus. The Holy Spirit has brought the world to one more chance. I believe it. I believe the Lord has stopped the world. It's almost like, what a merciful God he is. I mean, he stopped the whole world, not a young country or mine, the entire world, to stop. And as the gospel is being preached around the world, it's almost as if Christ has given the world one last stretch to say, come to me. I am the king and I am the savior of the world. 
whether you're from Asia, Africa, North America, Europe, South America, the Caribbean, the Isles of the Sea, he has brought every single person to a place where we realize we're just human beings. Whether you're black, you're white, rich or poor, all can be affected by corona. All are be affected by the economic spin-off of corona. All have the same needs. That's why I hate racism. I hate, I hate sexism. I hate apartheid. I hate uh, uh, segregation. Why? Because we are all humans. We are one race. It's called the human race. And we are a lost race. And that all of us, regardless of our nation, our tribe, our tongue, we might eat different food. But we still want food. The basic desire of human is food, of love, of safety, of protection, of family, of communion, of fellowship. These are some of the basic human needs and desire of every person as we travel around the world. And right now, looking at it, Islam, Hindu, Buddhist, Christian, all the needs are still the same. But only Jesus Christ offers the security and the safety of protection during all seasons. Only faith in Christ Jesus, only through accepting Jesus Christ as Lord God and now King will guarantee you safety. How do I do that, man of God? Well, if I didn't know Jesus Christ, I would accept him now today. I'm not here to make promises online. If you don't know Jesus Christ is Lord, there's going to be some rough days ahead. Satan is trying to stop. In spite of Jesus trying to get the world to come to him and receive him as Lord and Savior and King. Satan is on an all-out path still to destroy lives because he knows his time is up. Hear me, hear me quickly. He knows his time is winding down. Do you believe these are the end of times? I personally believe these are the signs of the end of times and the coming of the Lord Jesus. Now, you don't have to believe that way. But I look, Jesus said, look up for your redemption drawer at nine. I believe these are the times. I be That's why I'm, I, I get upset when I go on Facebook or social media of whatever type and I see people joking around and playing games. They don't understand the seriousness of this time. We have a short window of period. The coming of the Lord is near, not because of Corona only, but because the signs of the whole world is collapsing and Jesus is calling people from around the world, every language, every tongue, every nation to come to me. I'm the only one that can protect you and keep you and save you. He's the only one that can give eternal life. Hallelujah. You could call him Yeshua. You could call him Jesus. But just call him by his name and receive his blood. Whatever you want to call him. Jesus, Yeshua, Yeshua, Hamashiach. Jesus, the son of Mary, Jesus, the Nazarite, Jesus of Bethlehem, the son of God, the son of man, the one who died on the cross, just receive his blood. That's the most important thing. Receive what he did on the cross, dying and paying the price for sin. Receive how he rose triumphantly over death, showing that he has power over death, hell, Satan and the grave. Look up for his triumphant return because he's coming back again soon. He is coming back. I know mama said he's coming. Grammy said he's coming, but I'm telling you, the mockers and scorners, he is coming back. He's coming like a thief in the night. The trump of God will sound, and the dead in Christ shall arise, and they that are alive shall be caught up to meet him in the air. That's going to happen any day now. Not only because of Corona, but no, the world is going in a different direction, and the kingdom of God is going to another direction, and the kingdom God of God. Christ's plan and his hour, as the Lord put in my heart, is to get everyone who's saved. In the midst of this, people are still dying and going to hell. People are still refusing to accept Jesus as Lord. People have feel now, oh God, I'm going away from my message, but I might as well preach prophetically as the Lord is upon me. People are right now thinking they can make it through. They thought they made it through hurricanes and storms. They thought they made it through Dorian hurricane. They thought they made it through all kind of life situation. This is just another thing. Let me tell you something by the Spirit of the Lord. This is just not another thing. I'm telling you, if I were you, I would put down the sin. I would put down the liquor. I'd put down the sweethearted. I mean, people are still sweethearted. People are still shacking up. People are still living dirty lives. People are still drunk. People are still killing each other on the streets. Why? In the midst of a crisis time because they are lost 
And Satan is trying to kill as many people as he can. I'm telling you today, do not get distracted. Like Shalewa said, do not be distracted. Do not be distracted by what's going on. Get, do not be discouraged. Get your hearts in Christ. Expect his coming. Expect the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. Do not be left behind. Do not be lost. Do not die and go to a Christless hell. Hallelujah. He has made everything available for you and I to live free and to have eternal life. Please, I beg you, come to the Lord while you have a chance. Hallelujah. The days are changing rapidly. My God, there's some people I spoke to last week. They are gone. I got calls last week of people who went into eternity, passed from life into death, just like that. Suddenly, hallelujah, some of them are saved. Praise the Lord. Some were unsaved. Those who are saved, I rejoice. But those who die without Christ, I know they've gone to an eternal hell. Hallelujah. People are getting gunned down. They are going to hell. Why? Because they were in the midst of a deal. They were in the midst of a drug deal. They were in the midst of a gang deal. They got killed as gangsters. They're going to a bursting hell open. Their souls are lost forever. What comfort can you bring someone who dies of Corona who didn't know Jesus Christ as Lord? Died on a lonely bed in an isolated room, refusing to know Jesus. All of the preaching, all of the teaching, they refuse to accept Jesus as Lord. I'm telling you, there's nothing worth your soul in this hour. There is nothing worth your eternal soul. This is not my message, but the Holy Spirit is speaking to someone. You better get your family. Hallelujah. Be besides me, I'm making sure my family is saved and ready to see Jesus. If they want to see him, I am preaching and telling them, come to the Lord. Surrender your heart today. Today is the day of salvation. Not tomorrow, next, not next week. If Jesus don't come, hallelujah, which I know he's coming very soon. Your soul is at stake. Seek first the kingdom. Seek first the lordship of Jesus Christ. Colossians chapter 2, 13, 12. Sorry, verse 11. In whom also you are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands and putting off the body of sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. We have been circumcised with Christ. Buried with him in baptism. Boy, I'm telling you, we are to be buried with him in baptism. You know, if you haven't been baptized, I'm telling you, when the water's open, you go to that ocean. I'm praying. Hallelujah. If you need to be dunked in the water, praise God. We are baptized in Christ. We are to be, uh, you know, crucified with him and baptized in him. What am I saying? Wherein also you are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who had raised him from the dead. Christ was raised from the dead. The Bible said the same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead lives in you and I. And you being dead in your sins. You know, when you're in sin, you're dead. Man, let me tell you something. When I was in sin, I was dead. I felt so dead. How about you? Amen. Sin makes you dead. You don't realize how dead you are when you're in sin until you come to Christ and he gives you life. And you see, oh my God, look at the nasty life I live. I was dead. If Christ had found me in that position, I would have been dead for eternity. Not only physically dead. Hallelujah. The Bible said the wages of sin is death. That means sin kills your body. Sin, I don't care how much vitamins and nutrition. I saw I see some people running and going to the gym. That's good. But I'm telling you, the wages of sin will kill you. I know some people who have all the fitness and all of the things down pat. That's good. But that's not going to keep you alive. Sin will kill you. Praise God. Am I saying don't work out and eat right? No, I'm telling you, work out and eat right. But I'm telling you, sin is the cause of death. The wages of sin is death. And let me tell you, when you get saved, hallelujah, when I look, if I had died in that sin, not only would I die physically, but I would have died eternally. Be lost in sin forever and die. So we are the crucified. The Bible said, Colossians 2 and 13, and you being dead in your sins. If you in sin, you're dead. 
You are dead. You are what is I want to give you a turn. You're the walking dead. Praise God. They had a movie I never watched it. It's called The Walking Dead. Do you know how many people are walking around here today and they're nothing more but the walking dead? On the outside they look like they have life, but inside they are dead, dead, dead. Why? Sin, 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 sin. What is sin? Violation of the law of the kingdom. You can put whatever title on it, smoking, drinking, fornication, lying, thieving. They are just titles. The measure of the sin, sin is really death. It is violation of the word of God. And if no one else is preaching this, I'm going to continue to talk this. I'm not talking about you're going to get a miracle and you're going to get blessing. No, no, you're going to get favor. No favor for those who are outside of Christ. If you don't have a true relationship with Christ, there's no favor and no protection for you in this time. You're in trouble. If I didn't know Jesus, you know what I'd do? Praise God. I get to know him. Praise God. And you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, had he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. I'm telling you the kingdom way is not only is Jesus Lord, but he's king. Well, how do I know? Only a king can pardon the offenses of a person. Praise God. If you have offense today, the king can pardon it all. My God, in this corona time, if you have offense, if you've lived a life that was displeasing and unpleasing to the law of God's word, which is his kingdom laws, if you've violated them, whatever you want to call it, lying, cheating, stealing, anger, bitterness, unforgiveness, whatever title you want to put on it, if you've done all of that, it, it, maybe you don't even know, but you said, Lord, today I feel I violated your word. I violated your principles. I am the living dead. I want to come to you. Pardon my sins, O king. You are the king of this kingdom. I want to come into your kingdom. I need your pardon. I need your mercy. I need your forgiveness. Well, if you accept what Jesus did through the blood, he will pardon you of all of your transgression. If you confess your sins, the Bible said, he is faithful and just to forgive you and I and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Watch this. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us. I'm telling you, before you and I knew Jesus Christ, and if you're not saved today, there is a book written with all of our mess in it. Oh, all of our sins, all of our rebellion, all the secret things mama don't know about us. All the secret things daddy don't know about us. All the secret things nobody knows about us. Hallelujah. Or at least we think. You know what I found out about sin? There are some people who I know, uh, they, they are in some bad situation, and they look around all they want. They think no one see. I want to let you know a secret. I found out something. When I was lost in the world, or when I was violating God's word, I might have known him as Lord and Savior, but I was just doing my own thing. Uh, let me tell you something. Someone always know what you've been doing. Praise God. Everyone knows what you're doing. That's why I just come clean. Lord, I was a sinner. I'm here by your grace. No matter how I try to hide or you try to hide, somebody knows what we've done. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Somebody knows the sins that we did. Someone knows the lover we were involved with. Someone knows the relationship we were in that we thought no one knew. Somebody knows. That's how life is. So it's might as well just come openly and say, Lord, I'm telling you, whether people know it or not, you are the king of a kingdom. I want to be a part of it. You already know my life ins and out. I just want to confess what I did because you are the most important person I need to repent to. You are the most important person I need to be right with. Hallelujah. Have you with me this morning? Yes, there are some people around. You might have your wife. You might have your children. You might have some people. Yeah, you have the call and say, I'm sorry for hurting you. Forgive me for how I've hurt your life. Yes, I had to do that. But the first step is the first person I must please and be in right relationship with is the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Creator who sits on His throne and can see everyone's life. I'm not going to blame a pastor. I'm not going to blame a ministry. I'm not going to blame someone else. I'm not going to put my responsibility on someone else. That's what's happening now. Everyone is going online trying to find some excuse to blame some pastor, some church, and fight. Man, you're wasting your time blaming the church. You have a Jesus who you're going to stand before. And when he comes again, he's not going to be the savior of the world. 
When we see Jesus again, he's going to be a mighty roaring king. And he will have a record of everything we've done. You can blame the church and the pastors that, oh, they want money. Shut your mouth up. You just serve your king. Make it right with your king. Hallelujah. You home now. Hallelujah. Let the Lord deal with the church leaders. Let you get your life right. You get your children right. You get your family right before the Lord. And leave the church alone. That's not your business. Let Jesus deal with his church. You deal with your life. Praise God. How did I get on that? Let's get back to my scripture verses. Oh my God, I'm talking about the kingdom of God. So that's what Jesus did. He's king, he's Lord. He's the one who can pardon all of our sins. Hallelujah. We read Luke 6 and 33. Seek first this king. Seek and his righteousness. What is his righteousness? You cannot operate in the kingdom of God outside of righteousness. Righteousness is... Uh, uh, being in right position with the king. You know, I can't live my life like how I want to. Trust me. If it was up to me, there were some things I would want to do. But when I, you know, commit, and when you commit to Jesus as king of your life, now nah, he's not your friend. When you commit to him as king, what am I saying? When you, Jesus can be your friend, he can be your healer, he can be deliver, your deliverer, your protector, that's good. When he becomes your king, your life is not your own. Every single thing you and I had written concerning our life, the minute we accept him as king, we have to tear it up. Because now he says, your life is not your own, your life is in me, your life is mine. I will now tell you what to do concerning your life. And this is the hard part. If you're just a Christian, then you can just do what you want and think the Lord is backing it. How do I mean by that? What do you mean? Well, there's some people who get up in the morning, do whatever, and feel, hey, I'm blessed and highly favored. No, 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 the kingdom don't work like that. The kingdom works by you seek him first thing in the morning. Lord, I surrender my life to you. What do you want me to do? How do you want me to live? Who you want me to touch? Who you want me to bless? What do you want me to do? I have surrendered my life to you. Let your kingdom come. Like Shalewa prayer. Let your will be done in my mind, body, soul, and spirit. And I guarantee you, every single time Shalewa and our family pray that, the Lord leads us right to where we need to go. Praise God. We are the right place at the right time. Let me tell you something. No book. I could sell all the books I want to you. I could promote all the books online. I could have all types of Facebook live. Let me tell you something. You ain't going to make it unless you know how to talk to the king first thing in the morning. All through the day, ending of the day. I'm telling you, I preach for over 25 years and I've come to all of those years to this point. I could tell you the greatest sermons. I could preach to you and make you excited more than anything like I'm seeing now. I've been around some of the world's best preachers. I've sat at some of the world's greatest teachers and preachers' feet. I'm not going to get into their names. I've been in some sermons where they will preach you straight. But I'm telling you, the greatest plan of God is to get you into direct relationship with the king of kings that you seek him for yourself and as you seek the kingdom of god how do you do that you seek it by asking the king to come into your life you go to the king every day and say lord jesus you are king of the universe you have the answers to every single thing no book can tell you that no tape they can help you out they can motivate you but true motivation comes from in, within. I'm going to show you that. The true motivation for your life will come from within. It comes through a relationship with the king. Where you said, Lord, I surrender to you as king and Lord. What do you want me to do with my life? I want to let you know when you surrender to the king, everyone won't understand. It's between you and the king, Doc. Dr. Darrell, good to see you. It's you and the king one-on-one. -on -one. Deborah. Do you know I'm finding that out? In this corona, I realized most of the people I was trying to please, it doesn't matter. They haven't brought me a bag of food yet. Praise God. Most of the people that you you were trying to please and impress uh, in social media and on social platform, they're trying to survive for themselves. Don't you know that? 
Most of the people you were trying to please in the workplace, they haven't called you yet. Some of the people you were trying to please in the community, they haven't called and looked for you yet. Some of the people you were trying to please going to a church building, didn't, they, not, they haven't called you yet. Why? Because, hallelujah, everyone is seeking to survive for themselves. The greatest person you and I are obligated to seek is Jesus and to obey what he says. If the Lord tell me red, red tie, you might like it, that's your business. I'm obeying him. If the Lord say, come here and preach the gospel, you might like my preaching, go on another page. I can still preach by his strength. The Lord might tell me, say something, you might get offended, you might not like it, I don't care. I'm free. I am free. Shout, I'm free if you're free today. And this corona has taught me, oh my goodness, you don't have time to worry but no one else. You better make it right because, hallelujah, these months ahead, you, got, you will need to know the voice of the Lord for yourself. Don't worry about your past. Don't worry about what you've done. Forget you. I don't care what people think about me. My God, hallelujah, you can know whatever I did in the past. Let's know what you did. Praise God. All of us have sinned and messed up on God, but praise God, I'm here today, and I'm in the Lord, and there's no turning back. Praise God. So you can remember whatever I did. That's how folk go. You can remember what I did in the past. That's too bad. I'm covered in the blood of Jesus. When folk want to remember what you did in the past, tell them, I'm covered in the blood of Jesus. I'm saved, sanctified. That old person is the old me. This is a new me. I'm totally committed. That's what seeking the kingdom of God is. That's what seeking righteousness is. It means every day I must stay in alignment with the Lord. You won't be protected if you're not in his alignment. And all these things, everything you need, you know, since I've been seeking the kingdom, I don't worry about food and clothes and shelter. 20 years seeking the kingdom. Are you with me? I, I don't worry about food. Right now, Corona, I don't worry about food. Thank you. <clears throat> I'm telling you, Shalewa, ah, she cooked up a meal yesterday. Praise God. Hallelujah. She cooked some food yesterday in these last few days. She even baked the cake. Praise God. Just bless the family. Man, we don't worry about food, man. Praise God. I've been seeking the kingdom every day. Last week, y'all didn't see us all. We were seeking the kingdom of God. See, seeking the kingdom of God doesn't mean coming on this platform to preach, to, to have following. No, 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 no. When the Holy Spirit told me, come on, I come on. Last week, the Holy Spirit said, don't come on. So we rested. We pray, we spend time together, we spend time with the Lord, we spend time seeking the Lord and studying His Word. Why? Because it's not a competition. Praise God. I'm in no competition with anyone in the world. The only person I'm in competition with is myself. I push myself to seek the kingdom of God, to stay right with the Lord Jesus. I push myself to look up for his coming, to be ready for his coming. I'm not in any competition with anybody for numbers, for likes, for views. Praise God. Let's get it out there right now. Hallelujah. I mean, the only thing I'm motivated to do is to seek the Lord every single day. And I encourage you to do the same. You are to seek his righteousness. You are to seek Seek his heart. You have to seek his desires. What does he want in the earth? Have you asked him that? How many of you have asked the Lord, what does he desire? What does he want to be fulfilled through your life in this time? Praise God. Let's move on. I got to move on. I got to move on. Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4, verse 43. Are you with me? Say amen. Say praise the Lord. Thank you for those who stayed on. Hallelujah. Share this quickly. I'm about to just, I want to give you a few more scriptures. Get your Bible. Write these points down. Then we're getting ready to pray. I'm about to pray and prophesy over your life. Hallelujah. I'm not no fake prophet. I'm not going to be trying. You don't need no house or no car. You need a blessing from the Lord. You need right relationship with the king. You need to come into kingdom position. You need to be accessed as a kingdom citizen. I'm here to bring you into kingdom citizenship. That's what we're going to do. Get your family, get your children, get your loved ones on board. You and these nations around the world, you might not know what to say. Share this. That's the kingdom will. 
How do I know? The Bible said, I'm going to show you what he says. He want this kingdom preach. Luke chapter 4 and 43. Some of you sit back. You're still being selfish. God is not looking for selfish people. He's looking for people who are going to share the kingdom of God with other people so they can be saved. Stop worrying about what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink, what you're going to wear. Me, 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 me. This corona is just showing us we are a bunch of selfish people. It's all about me, 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 my money. Bless me. Help me. Support me. Do this for me. Do that for me. Come on, get out of yourself. When are you going to be a blessing? Huh? When is God going to elevate you to be a blesser? It's more blessed to give than to receive. So if you're still receiving, you're not blessed. You're not living the blessed life. The blessed life is when the Lord could turn your life around to be a blesser. That's why I hate these books of blessings. Uh, how to be blessed. Seven steps to be blessed. This is your time to be blessed. Blessed for what? Why you always got to be blessed, 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 blessed? Why you always got to have favor and blessing and their grace upon your life? And it's always about me, me, me getting favor, me getting glory, me getting the power of God, me getting the anointing, me getting this. All about this, me, 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 I, 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 I. God is not looking for that in this hour. The Lord is looking for people who say, your will be done. Your kingdom come. How can I be used to win a world and tell a world about Jesus Christ? And do I share the gospel? If I go on Facebook, if I go on social media, do I call someone and I can be praying for someone? Shall they were praying at the beginning? Praying for nations, praying for communities, that they will come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. I don't always want to be praying, Lord, bless me. Oh, send some money, Lord. Lord, provide food for me. Lord, provide clothes. Oh, I need to pay my rent. Oh, I need... That's why your rent ain't coming. I have found out as I preach and teach the kingdom and I lead people to Jesus Christ as Lord, every time I do that, guess what happens? Here comes the Lord sending a check. Here comes the Lord sending someone to bless me. Hallelujah. I got a call on Friday. A church called me and said, come pick up some food items. Praise God. And I got some and I've already started giving out. Hallelujah. I wasn't looking for it. I forgot about it. I'd be preaching the gospel and get phone calls. I check my voicemail, phone calls coming in. Why? Because I'm preaching the kingdom and God is sending people. You need to be that way. Stop looking to be blessed. Get ready to be a blesser to the nations of the earth. Praise God, we've been blessing nations of the earth. Yes, Shalev and I, nations, nations, nations to the glory of God. To the praise of the Lord Jesus Christ. Not because it's in us. But because we said Lord we want to be kingdom people. We want to tell the world about Jesus. We want to bless. And every time we bless nations. God turns around and bless us. Beyond we could even think or imagine. Praise God. I'm telling you people always wonder. How do you do it? I, do it. I tell my wife. My wife and I know no one can rob us. Because when we sow God's money to bless his nations, hallelujah, we leave it out of our hands. We release it to the hand of the Lord. And we say, Lord, that's your money, your resources. We release it into nations. And whatever the people do with it, that's them and the God. They got to answer to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If they touch God's resources, hallelujah, it's on them. <laughs> hallelujah. All I know is when we release the blessing of the Lord, every time we do it, every time we turn around, here comes a mighty miracle in our lives. Here comes blessing. Here comes the grace of God. Here comes the kingdom revelation. Here comes a deeper walk with Christ. Every time we do it, we go deeper and deeper in the Lord. And I look at my wife and I say, boy, if people really knew it's more blessed to give in God's kingdom than to receive, they will have a life of joy. We don't, we don't have time for depression. We got too many people we want to bless in the earth. We don't have time to get tired. We just every day seeking the Lord because we want to tell more and more and more people about Jesus around the world. We want to see more people come into the saving knowledge of Jesus. We want to see more people coming into the truth of God's word. We want to see more people healed and delivered and set free. We don't have time to play games. We just keep seeking the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Hallelujah. We love to be a blessing more than being blessed. And Corona hasn't stopped that. Now, because of Corona, we're looking to bless as many as we can in some way or the other. Every day, we say, Lord, how can we be a blessing in your kingdom so that your name, not us, 
We don't have to be glorified. We want Jesus to be exalted. We want Jesus to be praised. I challenge you, no matter what you have in your cupboards, I challenge you, no matter how much you have in the bank, you might be at your very last, but you have a voice. You can tell someone about Jesus. Get out of your depression. Get out of your fear. Get out of your worry. Get out of your trying to figure out what to do during this time of crisis. And seek the kingdom of God. And pray for someone else. And believe God for someone else. And watch what he'll do in your life. As long as the earth remains. Seed time harvest. That's what the kingdom is about. Seed time and harvest. You sow and you're going to reap in God's kingdom. Nothing has changed. Corona, no corona. You keep sowing God's word. Sowing your blessings. Helping others. Trying to be a blessing rather than trying to get blessed. And watch what the Lord will do in your life. Amen. I, I, I said enough of that. Luke 4 and 43. Jesus said, and he said unto them, I must preach the kingdom of God to other cities also, for therefore am I sent. If Jesus' ministry was to preach the kingdom, why are we hearing all these other messages? You better get this teaching today. You better get this teaching. Jesus said, I must preach the gospel of the kingdom in Luke 2, Luke 4 and 43. I must preach the kingdom. So if Jesus preached the kingdom, what else are we supposed to be preaching, Chris? So we name our ministry Kingdom Apostolic Ministry. You see it there. Everything became kingdom to me. After I began to see that Jesus, who I call my king, who I call my Lord, who I call my savior, after I start following him, I start, stop teaching all these other sermons that you pull off the internet. I stop preaching other people's sermons. I stop trying to preach messages that get people happy and make them feel good and run around and shout. Because when the emotion is done, it didn't transform their lives. They had an emotional experience. But I began to start doing what I saw my king and my lord did. And Jesus said, he preached the kingdom for this is why he was sent. Now I'll let you know the kingdom message is not going to be the popular thing. Why? Because people want to hear, I'm going to get the car, a house, and I'm going to get, you know, a million dollars. But I'm telling you the kingdom of God and Jesus as king and lord of my life and my family life. And the people I'm telling around the world about him and they make him king and Lord is worth more than a billion dollars. My soul is worth more than a trillion or any amount of money that man can print. Your life is worth more. Don't judge your life but how much money you have and your job and your status. Don't you see that? Corona should have taught us that job and money and career and all of these things mean nothing. They can be lost in a second. People who have their life savings are lost in the stock market right now. Their shares have dropped and they've lost all of their retirement money. Why am I saying it? We're going to pray for those people today because they're going to need the comfort of the Lord. The kingdom of Jesus, him as Lord, there's no money that can pay the price of it. And that's why I preach it. And as long as Jesus gives me strength, we have raised up an army of people around the world who are teaching, preaching, and demonstrating the kingdom from Africa to the Middle East to North and South America, the Caribbean, and Central America, all around the world. We are raising up an army. We have a mighty army of leaders around the world who we are teaching and raising up to teach the kingdom, and they are taking over their nations. You can be one of them. Get out of dead religion. Get out of your old uh, ways of thinking. Jesus said repent. It means change your mind. You've been under a religious system. That's why there's no breakthrough in your life. You've been under religion. You've been under churchianity. You've been under, hallelujah, the service and worship of man. There are some people love their bishop more than they love Jesus the king. That's why they're in the curse they in. And the, their bishop is living all kind of dirty lifestyle. The bishop has no power. The pastor has no deliverance and breakthrough in their life. Like my wife prayed the other day, Lord, anyone who, who stand in the way of sinner, there are some people who stand in the way of sinners. What do I mean? They don't know the kingdom. They haven't taught it. They don't study it. They don't bring that to the world. They don't bring it to their people. 
They hold them in bondage. Why? They got to hold them captive. They're in all kind of funny societies and they're holding the people in hostage. Yes, I said it. But Jesus said, I must preach the gospel of the kingdom. If Jesus preached the kingdom, what is your message? What is your message? What are you telling the world? Let me move on. Matthew 24, verse 14. Matthew 24, what is my topic today? The kingdom, the power, and the glory. Strategies and keys to surviving this crisis. Hallelujah. I hope this is blessing you. I'm going somewhere. Give me a few more minutes. Matthew 24, 14. Jesus says again, Jesus is speaking. He said, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for witness unto all nations and then shall the end come. I'm telling you, anyone who's connected with us, preaching, teaching the kingdom of God, and many are doing it around the world, not just any regular message, the gospel or the good news of the kingdom of God. Anyone who's doing that, I'm telling you, the Lord is going to protect you. The Lord is going to keep you. He's going to sit. I'm telling you, the more I preach the kingdom, the better my life feels. Praise God. The more I seek the kingdom, the more I pray the kingdom, the more I walk in the kingdom, the more I talk about the kingdom, the more we share in the kingdom, the more we study scriptures on the kingdom, the better our life gets. The more we know Jesus as king, the more we tell others about serving this king and living for this king, the better we get. Hallelujah. The more refreshed our life gets the more provision I'm telling you if you seek the kingdom provision is going to come that's the only guarantee the only guarantee I see Jesus saying in the scripture is if you seek my kingdom all things that you need concerning your life will be given to you added to you there is no other scripture. So you can tune into all of those prophets online. I don't know what they're going to tell you. If it doesn't come back to the point of what Jesus said, I'm sorry. Oh my goodness. I got to run along. I got to run along. Let me give you about a, a few more scriptures. Is that all right? And then we're going to be done. Uh, the kingdom of God is not only referring to the future. Let me give you these keys, these scriptural keys. For the kingdom of God. Write these down. Get this. Matthew 3. Matthew chapter 3. We're going to go quickly. Because I'm going to pray. And your life. We're going to pray and prophesy the word of the Lord over you. We're going to pray a kingdom prayer. And wherever your life is. You're getting ready to come into the kingdom. The king of kings is going to take over your life. Jesus is going to truly rule in your life. Get ready. Some things are going to break in your life. Some people. The king is going to say. You got to let them go. There's some um, friends. The king is going to say. No. Uh, the way I'm taking you, you got to let that go. Some old behavior, he's going to say, let it go. Yes, praise God. Mm-hmm. I don't know what happened there. Praise God. Just stay with me. Stay with me. Stay with me. Hallelujah. Yes, the enemy don't want you to hear this word. Get ready. Matthew 3. Matthew 3. Verses 1 to 2. Let's read quickly. These are the keys to surviving this crisis time. Hallelujah. I don't know what happened just now, but the devil is mad. You better come on here and begin to pray. Matthew chapter 3. Verse 1. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Write this scripture down. Repent. Change your mind. Change the religious system. Change your way of living your life for yourself and come into the kingdom. Next. Number 2. Hallelujah. The kingdom of God is not about heaven, but about bringing what is established in heaven to the earth realm. Matthew 6 and 10. Matthew 6 and 10. It says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. I wish I had time. That's why my wife and I, we pray the kingdom prayer. When we begin to pray the kingdom prayer, our lives are being transformed. We don't say, Lord, bless us. No. Jesus said to his disciples, this is how to pray. Pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Hallelujah. I want to let you know that Jesus has a will. He has a purpose that wants, he wants to be established. Hallelujah. The kingdom of God. Jesus saying, pray, pray, 
Pray for the kingdom of God to come into the earth. Pray that the kingdom of God is manifested in your life. How does that go? I'll give you a quick example as I give you these next few scriptures. I pray like this in Shalei when I, we pray, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. We begin to worship. Then we pray. This is our kingdom prayer. Father, let your kingdom come in my mind, body, soul, and spirit. Lord, let your kingdom come in my family. Lord, let your kingdom, let your power and your will, Lord Jesus, be manifested in our business and our operation and everything concerning us. Hallelujah. Are you with me? Then we take the kingdom outside. Lord, let your kingdom be over our city. Let your kingdom come. Lord, let your will be done over the churches, over the government, over the leaders, over every believer. Let your kingdom come. And because we are mission people, we begin to pray, Lord, let your kingdom come over the nations. And we call nations, Lord, let your kingdom come over India. Let your kingdom come over New Zealand and Australia, uh, USA, Alabama, Canada, uh, Italy, France, Russia. Let your kingdom come over Swaziland. Let your kingdom come over Iran, Iraq. This is how the Jesus wants us to pray. One time I go, hallelujah, the Lord gave me the revelation of how truly to pray the kingdom. Because before, I just used to pray it out as a rope. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We just written it off. No, that's not it. Jesus left that as a model on how to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Then pray, thy kingdom come. And how do you pray the kingdom? You pray the kingdom over everything. Come on, I'm going to give you 30 seconds to pray the kingdom. I'm telling you why. Because as I pray the kingdom, all the things that I needed started to change in my life. I get up in the morning excited about praying God's kingdom. I don't say, Lord, give me food, give me clothes, give me shelter. Oh, protect me, Lord. No, 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 no. I pray his will first. I pray the king's desire first. And Jesus as king has a desire. We are so selfish sometimes that we forget the king has a desire. We just want him to bless us, bless us, bless us. When are we going to bless him? How do you bless him? There's no amount of money you can give to bless him. So when people say bring your tithe and offering to bless the Lord, it's his own. The tithe is his. You can't bless someone with something that's his. You can bring him with an increase. And, and, and give an offering unto him. But the real way to bless him is say, Lord, let your kingdom come. Let what's happening in heaven, let your rulership, your righteousness, your peace, your joy, your presence, the glory of your name, let it come into this old filthy earth. Let it come into these filthy homes. Let men, drunkards, abusers, gamblers, homosexuals, let perverted ones, let them come to your kingdom. Let them be changed. Let our nation riddle with crime and violence and perversion. Let your kingdom invade our country. Let your kingdom invade our nation. So Buddhism, Hinduism, false religion, false teaching, churchiness. Hallelujah. Jesus want to break that churchiness. We feel comfortable in our churchiness. But I'm telling you. Churchiness is so far from the kingdom of God. Jesus rebuked the religious. Why? Because we have our form and fashion, but we don't have the power. The kingdom of God is not in word and in deed, but it's in demonstration of power. And tell you, driving demons out of people and healing the sick and preaching this good news of the kingdom around the world. And men are drawn to Christ and they are snatched out of their sin and they rise up in their purpose. We haven't preached the kingdom yet. That's why two-thirds of the world is still never heard the name of Jesus. But during this corona, we have this social media. We could reach a lost world. That's why I'm trying to raise up a thousand kingdom people. A thousand kingdom people. Are you one of them? You've been preaching out to me. We're going to take this gospel of the kingdom around the world. All I need is a thousand. I don't need a bunch of hallelujah churchy religious people just want an experience. Uh -uh. I don't want people who want to worship apostle and worship a bishop. I don't God ain't looking for people who are looking for fans and faces to follow them and to see them jump up and shake up and wind up. God ain't into that. God looking for people who's going to take the world 
by storm for the kingdom of Jesus Christ that every nation will hear and know about Jesus' lordship before he comes. He's given the world a warning. God is not looking for people who are begging and complaining and murmuring and hallelujah bitter and angry and arrogant and prideful. One thing God hates is religious arrogance. There are some people in some of these denominations, they're arrogant. They don't feel they're part of the other body of Christ. They feel they're in a special elite group, bishops, bishoprics, God ain't looking for you. I've been in the nations of Asia where ain't no bishop there. And people are coming to Jesus by the thousands and I say, Lord, what's happening? And God said, those bishops will never come here because they're too arrogant. They have, they have a form of godliness. And they don't have the power of God. They're in religion. They make men followers and slaves of them. They don't make people see me. They want people to see them. That's why I always tell people, look at Jesus. Look toward Jesus. He is the author and the finish of your faith. I lead people to Jesus. I want you to see Jesus. I want you to search out Jesus. I want you to seek Jesus. I want you to seek his word. I want you to live after his word. I want you to be transformed by his word till you rise up into maturity and the fullness so that you can make an impact in the world. You don't have to wait until tomorrow. Get right today. He wants to use your life. What do I mean? He wants to use your life even though it might have been broken. And part of you might have been snared. You might have been crushed by life and by people. I went through it. You went through it. Others have gone through it. But God specializes. The Lord specializes in taking the worst of this world. Taking the broken. Taking the shame. Taking the abuse. Taking the hallelujah. Those who struggle in areas and while you are seeking the kingdom of God and while you are showing the love of Christ to others he begins to strip off depression and while you're loving the unlovable he takes off the fear and while you are praying for his kingdom to come he removes the guilt and the shame out of your life and while you are feeding the hungry and clothing the naked with the little you have then he provides food and shelter while you are uplifting others he breaks the fear of death and dying while you're bringing people to eternal life Death is being broken of yours. Hallelujah. And he gives you the victory. And only you and I know what we have broken to. How we've been broken. Hallelujah. Because when the Lord is finished with us, praise God, we on the outside will look like something so new and so fresh. Even though on the inside we know how he has put our pieces together. People will see the beauty and the glory and the righteousness and the purity. But it's really from the broken pieces that the potter has put together. Stay in a place, people of God. Stay in that place. Matthew 6 and 10. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Oh God, let's move on. The kingdom of God is inside you and I. Luke 17. Luke 17. Turn quickly. A few passages. I want you to write this down. Let me tell you something. I, I want you to stay on this week because I'm going to be teaching this kingdom. The kingdom, the power, and the glory. I've just touched my messages. I haven't gotten into it yet. Oh, my God. Luke 17 and 20, and when he was demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God cometh not with observation, neither say shall they say, lo here or lo there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Oh God, I'm going to stop there. Get ready to pray. I'm going to give you a few seconds. Jesus said, the kingdom of God that he came to bring, that he has brought to the earth doesn't come with outside observation. You know what that means? Praise God. You know, we look at this outer skin, Chris. Doesn't matter the outer skin. Doesn't matter your hair, your nose, your eyes. This is for some lady. Doesn't matter how you look on the outside. Don't let anyone bring you down and lower your self-esteem. It make you feel you're not pretty enough. You're not thin enough. You're not good enough. 
You're not strong enough. You're not smart enough. Jesus said the kingdom of God doesn't come with outward observation. It means you could run into someone and don't even know. They're full of the kingdom and don't even know it. Jesus said the kingdom of God is within you. Praise God. I want to pray right now. I'm getting ready to pray. No matter what you have done, this crisis time, I want to let you know if you've made Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior and you've accepted him as king of your life, get ready because his kingdom is in you. What is his kingdom? Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. That's found in Romans 14 and 17. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. That is the kingdom of God. I am going to pray right now first thing that the righteousness of God be in your life that you come into right standing with the Lord secondly we're going to pray for the peace of God to come in your life and thirdly the joy in the Holy Spirit and lastly we're going to pray that the Lord strips off every dead religion when Jesus came and preached his first message to the religious people of Judea in Jerusalem was repent what does repent mean change the whole way you did things. Have a 360 degree turn and go the opposite direction. Change the way you think. Change the way you did things. Change the things you even knew. And who was Jesus talking to? Religious people. To the Jews who are the laws and the scribes and the prophets. He wasn't talking to sinners. I'm speaking to you what Jesus said today. Repent. The way you did things in the past is over. The way you survived in the past is not the way. You're going to need the wisdom to survive today in God's kingdom. That, that today you need the truth of the word of God to make it through this time of crisis. But be of good cheer. You have Jesus. Therefore you have his kingdom resources, his truth, his word, his laws. And his Holy Spirit in you, Luke 17, 21, his kingdom is in you and I. And if we learn how to tap into that kingdom of God that's already in us, get ready. You won't go hungry. You won't go sick. You won't be lost. You will arise. I prophesy it by the mighty name of Jesus. You will arise with faith. We break off depression. We break off fear. We break off lack of self-esteem. We break off the guilt and shame of your past. And we arise with you. You're a citizen of God's kingdom. You have every right to access it for whatever you need in this time. Get ready to pray. First prayer I'm praying right now is for your salvation. If you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord, these promises are not for you. Hallelujah. I am not going to make a false claim. If you do not have a full, truly committed relationship with Jesus Christ, here is your opportunity. Do it today. There is no looking back to tomorrow. There's no looking back to yesterday. Now, today is the day of your salvation. Share this with your loved ones. You might have a loved one who you don't know how to tell them how to accept Jesus Christ as Lord. You have a son, a daughter. You have a sister, a brother, maybe a parent. And you say, Lord, I've been praying for that family member. I just don't know what to say. Get ready. I'm going to lead them in a prayer. Do it quickly. Share it quickly. Share it. Let them know. Someone is about to pray for their salvation. You might have backslid and you knew the Lord, but the world got you so busy. It happened to all of us. Over the last few years, you've gotten so busy with life, getting up in the morning, eating, drinking, then running out to work, trying to make money, doing all kind of things. You got so busy with life. Hallelujah. And uh, you got so busy with the cares of life. That you left the Lord. You backslid. Some of you had a mighty powerful call of God in your life and you let it slip out your hand. I'm not here to say that the Lord is going to restore all of that. Some things are gone. But I'm here to say if you give the Lord one last chance, he will use your life in these end times to touch someone else. But you got to get rid of the filth in your life. No, you can't, you can't access the promises of God. Living a half-saved, half-committed life. 
You want to do things your way and then still or only want to do part of what the Lord wants you to do. No, this kingdom message is for the committed. This is for those who want to make a 200% commitment. Is it going to be easy? No. But that's why we have the Holy Spirit to help us. I get up every morning. I don't know how am I going to live for the Lord through the day. But I seek Him through the day. I talk to my sweet Holy Spirit. I get in His Word. I surround myself with His Word and worship. And at the end of the day, we come home and we rejoice that He brought us through another day. It's still saved. Still in Christ Jesus. That's how you're going to have to live today. One day at a time. Don't worry about how you're going to live for Christ for a week, for a month, for a year. You know, this corona has taught us we can't live that way. One day at a time. Get up today. Think about today. Take no thought for tomorrow, what it would hold, what it would bring. Just today. Seek him today. So right now, Father, if you don't know the Lord, repeat this with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm a sinner. I'm backslidden. I'm lost. I accept you as Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But today I accept you as another, another role. I accept you as king. And Lord, I surrender to your kingship. I surrender to your lordship. I want to surrender my life. I've lived my life my own way for the last few years and it's gotten me into pain. It has gotten me into fear. It has gotten me into destruction. I made a mess of my life. But today, Lord, I bring my life and lay it down at your throne. And I ask you, King Jesus, to recreate my life. Recreate my family. Recreate my home. I need you, Lord Jesus. I believe you died on the cross. I believe you shed your blood for the remission of my sins and the sin of the world. And you said, if I come to you, you will in no ways cast me away. I receive you today. Afresh and new. I let go of guilt and shame and condemnation of the past. And I rise today in victory in the name of Jesus. If you said that prayer, I want to welcome you again as a citizen of the kingdom. I welcome you another citizen. Hallelujah. Welcome. You know when we travel and we get back home. We get to the border control and they say, welcome back home. I want to say to you, as you come back into the nation, you've been out in the kingdom of darkness. Now you've come back to the kingdom of light. I want to say, welcome home in Jesus' name. Now come into the country of the kingdom and begin to live, abide by the laws. Now today, I want to pray for you right now that you are in the kingdom. I'm praying. I'm giving you 10 seconds. Get everyone you know. As I'm going to pray a special prayer, invite someone, share this, like it quickly, quickly. We're about to pray. I want everyone praying. Thank you, Shannon. Everyone praying. Chris, all of you, God's people, Shalewa, thank you. Get ready to pray. Get ready. Everyone should be praying right now. Father, right now we just worship you. We worship you, King of Kings. We worship you, Lord of Lords. We worship you, Mighty God. We worship you, Everlasting Father. We worship you. We're getting ready to pray for the supernatural kingdom of God to be released upon our lives. Come on, come on, come on. Get ready. We're about to pray together. That the kingdom of God in us arise. Get ready. Get ready. Pray and share this quickly. Father, right now, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, for being king and Lord. Father, I don't know where you're going with this, but you're getting ready to speak and say something powerfully. Lord, according to Luke, let's pray. Luke, according to Luke 17 and 21, right now, Lord, by the precious and powerful name of Jesus, I thank you for those who stayed to the end, those who endured the message, those who didn't give up or got uh, 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 offended of, uh, because of the word. Lord, I thank you that uh, those who stayed to the end of this kingdom message, hallelujah, in spite of everything that was said, Lord, I didn't say it out of my own heart. I just said what you wanted me to say, to de deliver your people, to deliver what you said so that your people and I could all be free. To, according to Luke 17 and 21, I declare now that the kingdom and the power and the glory of God arise in our lives, that the power of God arise, that the power of God arise in our life. 
that the same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead brings us supernatural provision, brings us supernatural wisdom, brings us supernatural understanding. I break the power of darkness. I break the power of fear and death. I break the every spirit. I bind the power of hell from the third heaven. Every power of darkness that wants to resist the preaching of the kingdom. The Bible says when the gospel of the kingdom is preached, then come the wicked one to snatch it away. We bind the snatching away of this word from the hearts of your people. Let it go to nations, tribes, and towns. We declare Lord Jesus, the kingdom of God and the king of kings, Lord Jesus. You are Lord of every nation, every tribe, every town. We plead the blood of Jesus over our lives and we pray for supernatural provision wherever people are believing for a miracle right now on this page. We come in agreement with them for your power to be made in their lives. And at the end of the day, you alone receive the glory, honor, and praise. Let this kingdom power be released in the lives of your people. Let this kingdom power be released in the minds of your people. I break up anxiety. I break up depression. I break up the uncertainty of joblessness. And Lord, I pray for creative ideas. Lord, I thank you that even this week you've been showing me, hallelujah, creative ideas. I pray now creative ideas begin to flow in the hearts of your people, not from without, but from in, because the kingdom is within. Lord, I break the lies that people have lived on, feeling that their answers and their solutions are coming from outside. Some political person, some political leader, hallelujah, some employer, but today I declare that the people of God trust you as their king, their provider, their protector, their provision. Hallelujah. That no government can protect the people alone. A government must align to the government of the Lordship of Jesus Christ for hope for the people. That the governments of the world must align their wisdom, their economic plans to seeking the kingdom of God. That our leaders would seek the Lord Jesus Christ for answers for the nations. That our leaders leaders will seek the word of God for solution that they were called the apostles and prophets of the land, the prayer warriors, the intercessors to get ideas for the nation, for food, for safety, for protection, for, for, for provision in the name of Jesus. And Lord, if they don't have the wisdom to do that, I declare every saint that served Jesus Christ, I send out in the realm of the spirit a warring mighty angels to devour the works of darkness. Every arrow, every dart, every snare sent against the people of God to rob, steal, and kill. I prophesy. The word of the Lord is coming right now. The plan the enemy had to rob, kill, and steal from you is being crushed. I see the enemy being crushed. I see some enemies that rise up in you because you are kingdom citizen. Get ready for their exposure. Get ready for them to be crushed. Every plan of the enemy to bring you into bondage and to fear. I bind the spirit of hell, death, and the grave. I bind the spirit of sickness, disease, and infirmity. I break it off in the name of Jesus from the third heaven. If you don't understand what I'm saying, I'll read it one other day for you to get the scripture. I break the power. Whatever we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever we loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. I loose the power of the kingdom upon my family. Come on, pray. Upon my home, upon my protection, upon everything concerning me, our seed, our generation. I release the kingdom of God over everyone who is a kingdom person on this page. I stand in agreement with them for the kingdom of God to come upon them. Hallelujah. You better share this. The kingdom of God come upon them. Lord, gambling addiction. Hallelujah. I pray that it's broken off the people right now. I pray gambling addiction. I pray liquor addiction. I pray for those who have loved ones who are unsaved and they're believing God for them to be saved because they don't want them to die and go to a crisis hell. I pray Lord, supernaturally, that person, wherever they are, without a sermon, without a message, just from the prayer that you will release a conviction in their heart, wherever they are around the world, that they will come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, wherever they, be, who they are, on their bed, on their bed of affliction, watching this broadcast, wherever sons and daughters are coming to salvation. Lord, in these end times, you, of course, you said in the last days, you'll pour your spirit upon all flesh. I declare upon every flesh that you said in your word that the spirit of God, hallelujah, praise God. I want to say this, even as we're looking around, I'm seeing people who are not even saved. They're talking about the Lord like never before. You know why? That's the fulfillment 
of the end times. The Lord said in the last days, I will pour my spirit upon all flesh. Right now, all flesh, Buddhists, Muslim, Hindus, Satanists, let your spirit come upon them and convict them, leading them to truth, leading them to Christ Jesus, leading them to repentance, leading them to receiving the blood of Jesus and transforming their life. I pray right now over nations, Lord, that the kingdom of Jesus Christ, nations that were closed up to the gospel of Jesus Christ, open up now. In the name of Jesus. Countries that rejected the gospel. People are, I declare them getting saved by the millions. I declare revival in nations right now. I declare revival among gangbangers. I declare right now. These gangbangers, you better tell them get saved. Or they'll die in their sin. You hit man, get saved. I speak the judgment of God to kill you if you don't repent. I said it. I prophesy that some people who are gangbangers, those who are pushing droughts and underhand deal, the Spirit of the Lord said, this is the last warning. Their time is up. God says, I'm a move in my judgment. The Lord said, even though I'm saving people in the world, I'm releasing judgment upon the wicked. And the wicked are going to perish. The wicked, why? Not only because of the Lord, because the devil knows these are the last days. He's going to kill some people who are working for him. Some drug dealers, some drug pushers, some people who are, hallelujah, hallelujah, and all types of things. Uh, the wicked, that the Lord has shown me by word of knowledge, if they don't repent today, if they don't repent these next few days, there's going to be a mass destruction upon them. Hallelujah, because God has fed up and the enemy knows his time is winding down. So he's going to kill the gangbangers, the drug dealers, the drug pushers, those mafia, those who are in high authority pushing. Hallelujah, wicked and Agenda, God said, I'm going to remove them. Hallelujah. And those who think they're going to escape, the Lord said, there's a hellfire. He is prepared for the wicked. Hallelujah. They're going to burn. Them and their families are going to be destroyed. Why? Because God is angry with the wicked. But his mercy is here now. Tell them, come to the Lord Jesus. Tell them, get their families. Tell them, turn in the guns. Turn in the gangs. Uh, hallelujah. Turn in the wickedness. Uh, seek the Lord because destruction is coming upon the earth. Great destruction. Hallelujah. You think it's going to end? Even when things open up, there's going to be great turmoil in the earth. Hallelujah. Read your Bible. It's prophetic. The end time. Jesus said, do not be afraid. When wars, rumors of wars, pestilence and disease. He said, don't worry, the end is not yet. That means more is about to come. Some more things, more things are going to hit the earth. Hallelujah. And it's going to be frightening. Get in the ark of safety of Jesus Christ or be lost eternally in a Christless dying world and a Christless dying hell. That's my message. I love you today. God bless you. Thank you for watching. Kingdom Come Now broadcast. Thank you. Dr. Kilafukali and Shalewa, we bring our love and blessing to you. Thank you for staying on. Thank you for sharing this and liking this. Hallelujah. We have an untraditional message. We don't come with any messages that make you feel good. We challenge you to live your fullness in Christ Jesus. You and your families. But we say blessings and love to you. If you are in Christ, this is the greatest time of your life. We speak blessings over you. If you're not in Christ, get to know him before it is too late. Until the next broadcast, thank you for joining us. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for your prayers as we pray for you and you pray for us. We will be continuing this topic. Look out for us. We took a few days off to fully prepare. We have so much notes to cover. And we're going to be doing more of this this week. Please tune in and tell all us. We're going to be coming on almost every day as the Lord gives us strength to finish this kingdom teaching. We're going to be teaching, what is this topic? The kingdom, the power, and the glory. Keys to surviving this crisis. Praise God. Till next time, God bless you. We send love and blessings to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.